Hello everyone. Yes, I am going to have to explain the title. In the first place, this episode was going to be about Antarctica. And you know I'm trying to get creative with the titles here, so I looked up how much Antarctica weighed. Yeah, how much does Antarctica weigh? The whole continent. It said something like 24 million gigatons. And a gigaton is like a billion tons, so assuming you're doing the math correctly, that leads us somewhere in the quintillions of ounces. And there are quintillions of grains of sand on this planet, meaning if all the grains of sand on this planet came together to form one giant cluster, that cluster would be much smaller than Antarctica. However though, the gears have shifted, and I have chosen to do a blog about the only continent that is larger than the other one I did back in episode 98, which would be Asia. Antarctica doesn't really have any civilization, so I don't think it would make for a good video. And I'm gonna go ahead and assume that Antarctica and Asia are very similar in weight. At least when it comes to gigatons. I mean, like, I'm sure Asia is a lot more of this than Antarctica is, but I don't know if that would surpass sextillion or not. Whatever, we're just gonna call it whatever it's called, okay? It doesn't really matter if I keep the same title. But, making an episode about Africa kind of made a bit more sense because outsiders don't know much about most of the nations in that continent. Asia, on the other hand, is home to two of the most populated countries in the world that, if combined, makes up probably a good fourth of all human beings on this earth. So, you should know a number of things about Asia, a lot more than you should know about Africa. But as Destiny would put it, there's still countries in there that probably fell under your radar. Just like with Africa, I'm only doing six facts total, but instead of doing three facts from two nations, I'm doing two facts from three nations. Pretty good timing too, because Kung Fu Panda 4 is hitting the screens in March, so what do you know? And while I'm here, I should probably bring this up, but a kid at my school was once saying, Pandas have got to be the dumbest creatures in the world. They literally eat the same piece of bamboo they were just sitting on. Okay, well, yeah, not exactly what I'd call smart, but they don't even compete with other animals such as squirrels. Those guys not only run out into the road, but they literally turn back around to go where they came from. I am not shitting. It happened once when my dad was driving and he ran over the squirrel. I swear to God. Dumb. Dumb. Shit assholes. Squirrels are just... Oh, God. They have no intelligence. I swore to the Lord, man. But anyway, I guess I should get started with the facts now. So the first country we're gonna go to is a country called Yemen, which is right next to Africa. Before I say anything though, yes, I know I'm leaving you in suspense, but I happened to find this sort of group located somewhere in this country on Google Earth. This could be pretty hard for you guys to find if you're using that method. So let's examine it for a second, J just, you know, so I can show it off. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, maybe it's a church or something, but there sure are a lot of people here. There's even people inside the house, and yeah, this is what it looks like to look at the ground. I believe this is the same man, but two different frames or something. Anyways, finally, on to the facts. Yemen fact number one. Men show off how wealthy they are with their daggers. In the United States, rich bastards usually buy all the shit they don't need, typically fancy cars and couches and crap. They think they're being cool, but honestly I think I would feel more cool not owning a bunch of bull crap I don't care about. In Yemen, the way to tell if a man was raised in a wealthy family is somehow determined on the type of dagger they have. They are known as Jambia, and don't ask me what the cheap versions look like in comparison to the rich versions because I would not be able to tell you. All I know about these curved knives is that the handles used to be made out of rhino horns, but in recent decades it was changed to bull horns because of rhinos becoming endangered and illegal to hunt. Alright, Yemen fact number two. Coffee was invented in this nation. Coffee, 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 coffee. Ah, cool, a contract, let's sign it. Coffee, coffee. Hey! Ah! What? Get out of here with your Japanese ass. You should be resembling the Yemish. All jokes aside though, this is technically not true. It was invented somewhere in Ethiopia or around there. But from what I've learned, the Queen of Yemen in the 1400s ruled over both territories. Like, it was kind of before they had established the borders, you know, just kind of parts of Africa and Asia. And if I believe correctly, the first person to have ever drank coffee was in Yemen. So I guess technically they get the credit. When you think of a country's greatest invention, say boomerangs from Australia or chess from India, Yemen holds the claim for coffee. 
I wonder if that means they're super enthusiastic over there. Oh lord. Alright, moving on to our next nation known as Cyprus. It is an island in the Mediterranean Sea close to Turkey, so it may have similar vibes to that crib. Cyprus fact number one. Jennifer Lopez started some conflict over there. Yes, as random and as bullshit as that sounds, it's true. I have heard of Jennifer before, I can't really tell you what she's a part of, but supposedly, from what I hear, she had plans on doing a concert there in 2010 for her 41st birthday. The only problem, though, being she had planned on doing it at some hotel in the northern part of the island. Specifically, a part of the island where the Turkish had invaded and kidnapped a lot of the Cyprus people. Oh, and not to mention, it was also on the anniversary of when that had occurred. So the Cyprus people fought back, and it didn't take much for Jennifer to change her mind and think, I should probably do this somewhere else. Good going there, Jenny. Cyprus fact number two. The oldest winemaking company to still be in business is located in Cyprus, and it's been making it since like the 800s, probably 1,200 years ago. Pretty impressive that they've been doing it for that freaking long, and I know it feels kind of lazy to end the first two countries with a fact about a beverage, but I mention this because I want to put this in the episode. It sounds like rat and patootie. Rat patootie. Which does not sound delicious. Regrettably, we are all out of wine. Why, why is there alcohol in this G-rated film? I thought it had to be at least two ratings higher to be able to use this drink. I'm not complaining, it's just never mind, never mind. Let's just wrap things up with the final nation we will be discussing in this episode, known as Armenia. Armenia is this dick small country not too far from Cyprus, so let's see what we can scope out from this place. Armenia fact number one. Chess is a common subject in schools. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting actually. If only schools here could be more like that and cut the bullshit. I mentioned this because my school, like many others, had clubs you could join if you wanted to, and chess club was one of them. And just to name a few others, I believe there was Lego Club, Board Game Club, and also Video Game Club, literally the year after I had left. God. Christ. You could not have picked a worse time to have introduced that crap. You couldn't have done it one year sooner, or frick, a semester. A semester sooner than that. You had to wait until I was gone. What the hell? The only reason I joined any of these clubs was because my parents needed to do something and they couldn't pick me up immediately. And chess club was just that, chess club. We couldn't do anything else than just chess. Which leads me to ask, why couldn't board game, video game, Lego, and chess club all have been combined into one club? Like, what's the point of splitting them up? Anyway, the final fact for this episode, our mini fact number two, there's this village in the nation with stork nests up the ass. Like, there are so many of them. A lot of these nests are on the tips of phone poles, and they are pretty huge. So much so, in fact, that smaller birds sometimes make their nests into the larger stork nests. I'm guessing they're pals or something. Well, I hate to be abrupt, but that's really all I have to say, and I don't really want to make any more continent blogs, so enjoy the two that we have, Africa and Asia. This is Kale Idlescope, and I will see you later. Goodbye.